Hey ho folks, it is episode 39 of Unhindered by Coding, where I, Nick McPhee, per hello is it too, wonderful to see you again, um, and anybody else who hasn't said hello, wonderful to see you too, feel free to say hello, it's always nice to have, um, proof of life, um, uh, so I, Nick McPhee, program, and you watch, and, and you help, that's more important. I get advice and feedback and suggestions, and I learn things, and I get to build things, and it's actually a pretty fun deal. So uh, this is a one-off um, because my schedule is all weird this week, so I made a couple of one-offs, uh, otherwise there would have only been one stream all week. Um, and this is what would normally be Saturday afternoon, so I'm returning to the segmented file system client um, that we started, uh, episode one of that sub stream. I don't know how you want to talk about these things last week. So we'll continue that. I'll explain the problem a little bit in a second. Um, actually maybe that's what we'll do now. Cause I don't think I have anything else super exciting to say. So, um, otherwise if I seem a little flustered, I, uh, was gardening, um, getting the, some final plants in before it gets too cold to do things like that and totally lost track of the time and um, very possibly could have just gardened right into the stream and that would have been bad. Um, but my lovely wife came by and we were chatting and I actually looked at my watch and went, oh my goodness grief. So I just ran up and turned everything on and, and so I haven't really kind of had a chance to get in the Zen I'm programming now space, but we'll be fine. It'll all be good. So um, the problem that we're working on is from a lab that we use in our systems lab course. In the lab, the students do this in Java and I wanna see what it looks like in Rust um, and possibly depending on the experience, rewrite the lab so that the students actually do it in Rust instead of Java. Um, so the students are building a client for a fairly strange um, service where they contact the server um, over UDP, not TCP, and the server then sends a blizzard of packets back at them that collectively form several files, one or more files. And as the recipient, you don't know how many files, you don't know um, how many packets per file, um, uh, you don't know anything about the file types. So you don't know a whole lot. And nothing comes in order or with any particular organization. So you get all these things it's like getting a box of puzzle pieces and you have to assemble the puzzle, but it's actually three puzzles. Um, so every packet has one of two structures, um, which is illustrated here. Let me make that a little bigger. Um, there's a header packet and there, well, there are one or more header packets and there are presumably many data packets and header packet has one byte that is the status byte, one byte that's the file ID, and the rest of the packet is a string that is the file name. And the uh, data packets have a status byte and a file ID like the header packets do. Then the next two bytes are the packet number and the rest of the packet is the data in that packet. Um, we can tell whether it's a header packet or a data packet by the parity of the status byte. If the status byte is even, it's a header packet. If it's odd, it's a data packet. And if it's three mod four or the second to least most significant digit is a one, the data packet is also the last data packet for its file. Um, and that's how we can figure out how many packets there are in a given file. Um, 
the file IDs presumably you know match. So whatever the file ID is for this header packet will tell tell us that this is the file name that goes with all the data packets with that file ID. And then the packet numbers do start from zero and go to whatever the last packet is. So we know that. Um, and then the rest of the bytes are just raw bytes as far as we're concerned. We don't know anything about their structure. Um, now we had gotten on when we started this on um, Saturday, we had gotten um, pretty far. We spent a long time talking about what the problem was. And if people have questions about the problem, it's a strange problem. And I'm more than happy to try to answer questions. And if it seems weird, it is weird. Like it was invented to be like a project for a class. It's not meant to be super realistic. Um, uh, and so if it seems a little strange, well, it is a little strange. And I'm, it's my fault. Um, so we had, uh, oh, we created a part, part a packet parse error that we were using to um, indicate problems with parsing packets. We had an enum packet that had two packet types, header and data. And the header holds a header, op, not object, we're not in Java, um, a, th a thing of type capital H header. And a data holds a thing of type capital D data. Um, and so the intent is that this will be the header information from a header packet. This will be the information from a data packet. And every packet is one of these two things. Um, and we then impled uh, various things. Um, uh, we've got an is header that takes um, a slice of bytes and returns a Boolean, um, essentially saying whether it's a header packet or not. Um, and we did, re we returned a result here because there was the possibility that bytes would be empty. Um, because the, the answer is bytes mod two is zero. Um, and that's going to fail if this is, if bytes is empty, there might not be a zeroth byte. So we check to see if it's empty and we return a packet parser incomplete packet. Um, if it is in the result type, otherwise we return an okay um, with the evenness. And then we have a try from um, here that would, makes this comment irrelevant now. Yes, actually this comment is no longer meaningful because it got dealt with. I don't always do a good job of moving my to-dos. Um, so we impled the try from trait. If you're not familiar in Rust, try from uh, gives you a way to automatically convert from one type to another. So we're tr converting from a slice of U8s, basically an array of U8s, to a packet. Um, and the, the try part, there's a from trait as well, but the try from means that this returns a result um, that ha could potentially have an error. A from trait always succeeds. A try from returns a result. Um, so we try from, uh, oh, and so we have to specify the type. Um, uh, that's something that's required by try from. So you have to specify the, the type error. So we're saying that the error we're going to return is a packet parse error. Uh, try from takes the slice of bytes, returns a result, which is either a packet. So self here is just another name for the type that we're implementing or a packet parse error. We check to see if the packet um, is a header um, and the question mark will return. If the is header returns a packet parse error, this question mark will catch that and then just immediately return the packet parse error and not continue any farther. Um, so it's kind of like throwing an exception 
but it isn't, and it doesn't require any of the runtime stuff that exception handling requires. Um, and I've actually grown very fond of option and result and question mark in Rust. I think that that aspect of Rust is actually really quite nice. And, and I, there are parts of Rust that I still find a little weird and non-intuitive, um, but the option result question mark stuff, I actually really quite like that. I think that's pretty nifty. I think there are aspects of it I don't use as well as I can. Um, some of the stuff that manipulates the insides of uh, options and error and result types, I don't have at my fingertips yet, but um, I conceptually like this a lot. And so if it's a header, then we're going to um, try to convert the bytes to a header by calling the try from on header. Um, now, if I, um, if it knows it needs a header here, do I need to have the header try from, or can I just put bytes here? Oh no, because I want the question mark. And if I just put bytes, it will do the conversion, but I won't be able to get rid of the error. Oh, stop, stop hovering on me. Um, I won't be able to deal with the error and have it automatically return the packet parser. I think we dealt with that last time. So I convert the bytes to a header. Again, if that fails, we'll just return that right away. Otherwise, we'll convert the bytes to a data packet. And if that fails, we'll return the rel relevant error. Otherwise, we'll return the packet itself. So we can now use this to convert from um, streams of uh, arrays of bytes to packets. Nifty poo. Um, so now we finally get to the actual things and we finished header. What we, where we left off was data. So we have data still to do. Data is like a big empty hole at the moment. Um, so header, uh, the file has a file ID in the string. Um, we've got a from that converts a packet, a UTF-8 error into a packet parse error, which makes the conversion down here a little easier. Um, uh, so if we don't have enough bytes for it to be a header, then we send, uh, return an incomplete packet. Otherwise we assert that it is actually a header, um, in case for some reason it gets called on something that isn't a header. Um, uh, Ooh. Oh, 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 back up here. Ah. And if you implement try from, you get try into for free, if I remember things correctly. So you're suggesting that here we ought to be able to say bytes try into um question mark and that, that oh yeah that's pretty slick now this is a place where i'm not sure i would argue that that's more readable um i have my doubts about that but maybe this is just a you know an experience thing on my part um uh, but to understand what we're tr trying to map into, you would have to know what type, and the compiler does, that's what allows this to work, you'd have to know what type goes here. And so you'd have to know that a header takes a thing of type header. Um, and you'd have to know that a data takes a thing of type data to know which conversions going to be called but it is shorter and I do sort of like not having to explicitly 
specify the type in some ways. So I'm going to leave that alone. And um, we can also confirm that our tests still run and they do, so that's happy. Um, so I'm actually also trying to test this stuff as I go. Um, at least this back end, um, the stuff that doesn't touch the network, um, trying to write some tests as we go along to help support changing like that, changes like that. Oops, go away. So, um, so we assert that it is a header packet. File ID is the first byte. And the name is, we take everything from byte two forward because um, zero is the status byte, one is the ID, two and forward is the actual name. And uh, we convert that to a string. Now, um, we actually, oh yeah, that's, yeah. Um, so we're assuming here that all the bytes in the slice are used so that we can go just two dot dot here we're going to end up with a buffer that's got a lot, potentially a lot more bytes than the, just the length of the string. But when we read that from the network, we will get told how many bytes have real content in them. And we can use the dot dot in slices to actually only pass forward the part of the slice that mattered, that had any content. So, I think everybody at this point in the process can assume that the packets, that everything that they're getting in their slice means something and, and should be used. And that if there's trimming to be done, that will be done when we read the packet from the internet. And at that point, we know how much of the packet has content. And this is actually something that's really cool about slices which I don't think I had any appreciation for, but appreciation of before I ran into this part of this problem. In Java, there's no good way that I'm aware of. If you have an array of 1028 bytes, I don't know that there's a good way to say pass the first 150 bytes of that into a function and have that function not know that those other bytes are out there. Um, you would have to actually make a new array and copy stuff, which that is inefficient and gross. Um, and uh, maybe there is some library thing in Java land that will do that for you, but I don't know of one. Um, I'd have to look into that. Um, but in Rust, actually, it's really easy. So we can just have this take a slice of bytes and know that it'll be the right length. Um, and that's actually super nifty. Um, I think that's actually a really neat feature of Rust that I did not fully appreciate its niftiness um, until I got into this project. So I'll have to do a little homework and find out if there is in fact a better way to do this in Java. Um, uh, but I don't know one off the top of my head. And then um, if this, if the from UTF-8 fails, that's how we can get a UTF-8 error. And this is supposed to return a packet parse error. Well, this from will convert a UTF-8 error into a packet parse error by converting into a file name parse error for us. Um, now, I don't have a test for this because I couldn't, and I, I, unfortunately, I have not had time this week to figure out a, an example of a sequence of bytes that won't parse. And I think I'd need to understand Unicode better than I do and know, figure out a, um, a sequence of bytes that won't parse as Unicode. And there have to be many. I mean, it's not a problem of, you know, knowing that there is one but I don't know how to make one off the top of my head. Um, somebody here does. I would love to hear about it, but um, otherwise I will just let that dangle. I've got to do two, uh, to do somewhere later on to fix that. Okay, so now we're at the, pros the part of the process where we are 
Um, yeah, I think that's the thing to do is to take something like any multi-byte character, like an emoji, and only have the back half of it. And I would just have to like look up what the byte codes for something like that are, which I have not bothered doing. Um, but I guess, I mean, actually, maybe this is easier than I'm thinking. Um, emoji byte codes. They've got it. Somebody's got to have this. Um, okay, so here, for example, is a sequence of bytes that makes a thing. Um, and I suspect that if we were to have this sequence without that first byte, something bad would happen. That's my guess. Um, so uh, let's try it. Um, so let's see, copy that. Um, I've got a bunch of tests down here. I've got so many tests, I think I'm gonna, these are probably gonna need to move off into um, their own file, because uh, yeah, there's a lot of tests. Um, so we're gonna have a test. Um, illegal file name. So we're gonna let the bytes be evacuate back bang. And here's my, um, actually, let me do the whole emoji in the comment. Um, so, um, so, uh, the bytes for a smiling emoji, boom. Um, and I will bet there is some way in Rust that I can just do hex numbers. Rust hex numbers. I don't know what that is, but I bet. Oh, the docs? Of course they would. This will be much easier if I actually do this. So stir from UTF-8 would make sense that they would have an example. Um, Oh, so they've got this, and we could just take it, and here they've just replaced the first one. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so we could do that, um, and that will do the thing. Okay, um, so let's see. We'll, I'm going to grab this. Um, And then we'll grab the broken one. Not legal because we replaced the first byte with a zero. Then I don't have to think about the hex. And doom. So, oh, I. Mm. I do want this to be a back of U8. There we go. And now I can say let result be better try from. Oh, but I'm going to have to put. Um, I have to actually um, have the first two bytes in as well. Um, so I'm gonna have to have zero, so it's a header byte, and I can say zero for the file ID. Um, so this would be these last four bytes 
are not legal UTF-8. In the emoji sequence with a zero. Okay. Sparkle heart. Pion. And now we are expecting this to be. We are expecting this to be. Result to be er packet parse error um, uh, what is it? It is hello file name parse error. So, and that is grumpy. Why is that grumpy? Um, oh, I didn't do the reference. Pass the reference. And now it's still not happy. Um, Uh, oh, we had to do the reference and the D reference because we needed to go from a vector to an actual slice. Blah. So that syntax, I must say, I do not find intuitive um, at all. Um, but there we are. And now run the tests and they pass. And if I were to put 240 here, then the test should fail because, yeah, we expected an O, we got an OK and we expected an error. So, and it did actually parse to be our sparkly heart. Well, that's nifty. Okay, so that should work as a test. I wonder if we even want an example of this just for fun. Um, I guess there's really no reason not to. Test fun. Uh, em, uh, emoji in file name. Um, so the last four bytes in the following are legal bytes for sparkling heart emoji uh, zero zero let result header try from sparkle heart assert equals bang result okay file ID is zero. Do I not have any that actually parse? That's kind of weird. Huh. So I don't really have great tests in the sense that I don't have good tests for positiveness. So a header has a file ID, which is going to be zero, and a file name which is going to be, quote, sparkly heart thing. Steal that from over here. Oh, no, come here. Boom. 
Now it's grumpy. Uh, oh, two string. Because that was not a string. Hey, test all pass. Um, so we do successfully get. Oh, we can't spell emoji apparently. Um, oh, come on. Here we There we go. No, it's not right. What? Ah, I'll just fix it. Oh, gee. There we go. Um, so. I think we've got pretty reasonable. So, okay. If, if anybody can, like, help me understand what's going on here, that would be great. Because I find this super annoying as well. Um... So, bytes is a vector. So if we do that, bytes is a vec. And we want a U8. So it doesn't convert from a vec to U8 magically. Like if I change that, it goes all sh shouty. Um, putting a star in front of it makes it... Uh, oh, it's not telling me something useful about what it makes it. Um, that turned it into a U8. So the star turned it into a U8. And then the... Oh, so you're suggesting I should just be able to do that? But that doesn't seem to work. Because um, I get a reference to a vec of U8. And so I think the problem is that try from matches so many things um, uh, that we have to be really explicit um, in the type. I think that was the problem we ran... We, we, figured out when we were looking at this before is that try from and this is one of the places where I find Rust kind of confusing um, to oh, Vec as slice would be so much better. Certainly be more readable. I didn't even think about that as a an option. Oh, so much better. Yeah, I actually, I, I think I just like the the as slice option rather than the try from. Um, because I think we're, we're, it's clear that we're saying that we, or that this needs to be from a slice. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I think it could be um, any of a number of ways, but I, I think I like Wagafa's um, as slice thing and wish I had been aware of that, the existence of that earlier. Which I'm sure, at some level, I was aware of it, but I don't. Uh, um, I don't always remember that I know these things. Um, and the tests all still pass. Happy day. Oh, I think that's a big improvement. I think that's a big improvement. <clears throat> so, so I think that that gives us a pretty reasonable set of tests for header parsing and that I'm inclined to commit this and move on to data packet parsing. If there are, unless there are questions or other suggestions. Okay, let's do that. Um, 
so oh yeah so this is where we switch to try into I'm actually going to make that a separate commit because I want to have a note that that was a thing that happened from try from to try into this um, switches from header try from bytes to bytes try into um, I think this is shorter and cleaner if slightly magical about what type we're converting to. Um, so let's see, Wagaf has got a suggestions about the if statements. Let us go back. Well, and I actually, in, in general, I'm a, a fan of getting rid of if statements. I think that that's one of the things that I've seen in um, uh, Rust is that if statements are often unnecessary, and that's kind of cool. <clears throat> um, so, it, so I guess the question... Because I yes, it's hard. It can be hard to explain this stuff in chat. Are you talking about? So there's I, I found three scrolling back through. There's this one, there's this one, and there's this one. So two of these are checking the length of bytes, twenty seven. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Hello, the composite gen. Welcome to the chat. Um, okay, so I'm totally willing to believe that there's a way to do this that doesn't involve an if. I don't immediately know what it is, but I'm happy to have a suggestion for how to remove the if from this thing. Um, uh, is this... Um, Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how to make it go away. Um, if you could give me a, a thing to look up, then I could try to chase that. Um, and thanks for following. I appreciate that. Um, uh, because it wasn't clear to me. It felt like it ought to be like make I ought to be able to make it go away um, but it wasn't obvious what the right option was um, so <clears throat> I'm gonna press on with the commit but if you um, have something to suggest just even something to look up that would be great um, uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so we got a bunch of these guys, and then we added these two new tests. So I'll just do all that as one thing. Um, expand the um, header try from uh, test. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, uh, let's expand those. So, added tests that address the file name parsing part of the process. Um, also replaced the quite obscure ampersand star bytes with bytes as slice as that is much more readable All right. oh. 
boom, 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 boom. Okay. So now, um, oh yeah. So it would be useful if I actually pointed you at the repo, wouldn't it? Um, oh no, that's not what I wanted. I want to be over here. Is this the right? Nope, not that one. Am I going to have to, I might just have to GitHub, um, segmented. Really? You don't remember that? Oh, there it is. It starts with Rust, not segmented. So there's the URL, pasting it into the chat. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And the if in question should be here. Let me actually just confirm that. Pretty sure the if in question is going to be there. Yeah, it's right there. It's on a different line because we changed some things, but um, that's the if that you were interested in. So you should be able to poke at that. Um, so, so I think that takes care of header parsing, and now we want to deal with data parsing. Um, and so we're essentially, we need a try from for data, um, and we've got the structure in place. We just don't have any actual logic. Um, and so, uh, we have some of the same assumptions, so we probably want to Actually, I could just steal this much of. Actually, I'm gonna steal the whole thing, and we'll just hack around it. Which is a terrible thing to do. So that's five. We have less than five bytes. We have an incomplete. Um. Uh. Packet. We want to assert that it's not a header. So we expected a data packet, but the first byte was not odd. And then the file ID is still going to be bytes one. And this doesn't exist anymore. And the packet number is going to be <coughs> And now I have to convert from a pair of U8s to a number. And I wonder if I can parse. Is there like something cooked in? Rust parse slice U8 to integer. A buffer of a slice of bytes to an integer. Byte order crate. Um, so we can have our buffer, and we can say we're going to read something from it and indicate whether we're big Indian or little Indian. Oh, that's interesting. Because I think one of the things that's always confusing when the students do this in Java is whether things are big Indian or little Indian. And here we would have to be explicit about that, which would be kind of cool, actually. Um, or it looks like we don't need another crate. We can just use um, Oh, if we have a slice, we have to convert it to an array, though. And we do have a slice. And so this is little Indian, big Indian. I don't know what that one is. Um, native Indian. Okay. Um, well, we want to actually specify our Indianness. So, 
do I want to bring in another crate that can handle slices or just use the cooked in things maybe I just want to use the cooked in things might be easier um, assume that converting to a slice to an array shouldn't be that big a deal um, Hmm. Yeah, so I converted it into an array of two U8s. Okay, well, that could be a thing. Well, we could try that. So let's see, we would have... Um, so actually, I'm going to let packet number bytes be of type u8 2 and that's going to be bytes 0, 1 2 to 4 uh, and it was try into And that's not going to work because I've got to try. So that's returning a result. <clears throat> so, in fact, the issue would be if the length was wrong. And really, I shouldn't have to worry about that. Um, because I, I've... Uh, checked that there are enough bytes up here so I think I should be able to just say expect um, bytes for the packet number do 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 oh that would be simpler yeah, that would be simpler. Um, okay, let's do that. Uh, um, so, bytes 2, comma, bytes 3, and then we get rid of all this wapala 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 Boom. Yeah, okay. And then the packet number is back up one. Or did I put it? No, nope, I did. Must have done it here. Come on. Or not. Where? What? Oh, it was here. Um, so from. So I got to look up what my um, Indian this is. Uh, how to construct packet numbers. Okay, so <clears throat> the most significant byte is the left and the least significant byte is the right. Um, and that means we're in um, a big Indian universe. If I just look at that right. So most significant on the left. And in this example, the least, yeah. So big Indian seems to be the thing. So from BE bytes. Da, 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 da. So I want the packet number is a U16. From BE bytes. Uh, packet number bytes. Boom. Okay, and then the data is just going to be everything else from four forward. And so then we're going to return the data with the file ID, the packet number, oops, packet 
bracket number and the data. Now in doing this, I realized there, I, I oops, 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 oh, data is a vec, so we're gonna to have to actually turn that into as dot as vec, right? I can do that. Except it's not happy. Two vec. Well, okay. Oh, because it actually has to create the vector. It can't just rethink of it as a vector. It has to actually do some work. So it's using the two version of the name. Now I realized um, that there is one thing missing from this data, this data data structure. That's not confusing at all. Um, we need to know if this is the last packet. And that information was in the status byte and the status byte isn't stored here anywhere. Um, so we actually are gonna to need to add a field is last packet, that's a Boolean, and we want to add that, let is last packet be <coughs> the status byte, which is bytes zero, mod four is three. So that'll tell us if the, um, this is last packet or not. Um, and, ne oh, and then we have to add that here. Is last packet. Ba -da -ba -da. Awesome. So I think that is good. Now I have to write some tests. Should have written the test first, actually, but, eh. Um, uh, so... we've done is header so we've done all that testing so i think we just need the conversion <coughs> um so i'm going to actually grab this and bring it down here just as a comment um plop you here and I'll comment all that out and I'll remove it when I'm done writing some tests. Um. <laughs> well, um, I would love to see uh, if it's one line, can you just paste it in the chat? Um, uh, or is it something that we need to look at on the internet? Um, No, it's test singular. Ah, ah, ah. Mod. <laughs> yes, with lots of funny punctuation marks. It's like APL, um, where you had the, the crazy keyboard. Um, uh, let's just grab this much. So I don't have to think too much. parse data, data tests. Um, we're going to need data, but we won't need. Um, so test. So what did I do? How did I? Um, so I checked that there was an error on the empty array, on the short array, that non-header panicked. Okay, let's try start with that. Um, what did I call it to be consistent? Error on empty array. F N. Error on empty array. And 
fact, I can steal this because it's really going to be almost identical. Except for it'll be data, and we should get incomplete packet. There, same. Aha! Paste bin. Let's grab that. Gotcha. So it's one statement. It's just um, split up for readability. Uh, let's go here, here. Oh, nope, not there. Wrong window. X dot then. Let's, I want to make sure I got the if statement in question. So that's the if statement we're looking at. Um, packet is header bytes and then x dot then header try from bytes map packet header unwrap um I'm lost partly um, uh, there's no reference to data so if it's a header packet, we're supposed to parse it using header. Otherwise, we're supposed to park it, parse, parse it using data. Is this what's line three in the paste bin? Was that supposed to be data instead of header? Perhaps. Um, and I will say, I'm actually super glad to see this. And I'm going to have to think about this some more, but I don't think I would find this more readable. Um, uh, oh, the test probably didn't pass. Oh, let's see. Oh, the test didn't pass yet because where you were, uh, the data um, try from uh, was just a to do. It doesn't do anything. Um and there weren't any tests about data parsing yet. Um, so that's what we're writing now. I'm not doing test-driven development, which I really should be and would generally be a proponent of. Um, I'm sort of writing the code first and the test letter, um, uh, first and the, the, the code first and the test second. So um, now as far as the, the uh, match, I had a thought about doing that and I feel like I did it or did something like it and that Clippy actually did fuss at me um, uh, and said, oh, you just have two cases on a Boolean. You should make an if out of it. And I thought about it and I was like, meh. Um, I'm happy actually having an if. Um, you know, it is a Boolean. We have this standard structure um, for dealing with Booleans, which is the if then else. Um, and so I'm cool with that. Um, um, so, yeah, and I do have like kind of all the warnings turned on. So I'm, I'm going to just leave this be. Um, but thank you, Wagafa, very much for sharing the alternative. And I... I confess this does not immediately make sense to me. I have to think about what some of these pieces, um, 
Yeah, I agree with that completely. Um, after, but I do want to think about because um, Izitsu was doing some stuff with and then and then or else in another context, and I I think that was on um, the discourse uh, Discord, and I am not. That is not my intuitive direction to go. Um, and I think this is part of result and option that I don't have my head totally wrapped around. So I'm going to save this and come back and look at that later and see if I can make more sense of it. Um, but for now, I'm going to stick with my simple if else and move on. <laughs> um, oh. So I don't think I had that thought that then turns a Boolean into an option. Um, well, and that's how I guess that this probably should have been data here is that it seemed like this was probably the, the, it was true and this was the, it was false case. I mean, that part seemed intuitive. Um, uh, Oh, and I see that here we're just taking the header we get from this and making it a packet colon header. And we're taking the data we get from this and making it a packet colon data. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then here we're so okay this is all the curly braces for the and then so the and then takes a single body so this is the boolean and this turns that into an option. And so if it was true, we're going to get this closure. If it was false, we're going to get this closure. And we're going to unwrap to get back out of the option at the end. Yeah. So we had an option of a result. And the unwrap gets the uh, gets rid of the option, and then we return the result type. Okay. Well, that's impressive. Full marks for niftiness. Um, I'm going to stick to my if, <laughs> if else for now, but I think that's super cool. Um, and I'll think about ways to. So you you said that you come from Haskell. Would you? Would, would that have been a pretty normal way to have written something like that in Haskell? I'm sort of curious. I have, I did a lot of programming in Miranda, which was a predecessor to Haskell a long time ago. Like this is back in the late 80s, mid to late 80s. And then for various reasons, I never did much actual Haskell. Um, Haskell was being developed in the late 80s and early 90s. Um, and because of what I was doing in grad school and then starting my job here, getting on top of Haskell just never happened. Um, but I really liked Miranda. Um, and, uh, and at the beginning, Haskell was a lot like Miranda, but Haskell's moved in a lot of ways um, since then, and I'm not very on top of that so um so if, yeah so and i remember in miranda at least you didn't really have if statements you had pattern matching was kind of the closest thing um but it was that was a long time ago and that's not the problem we're solving today so um and i don't have enough time and brain power to like get good at everything so um, maybe someday Haskell will come to the top of the pile but hasn't happened yet um, 
So, okay. Um, so I think we're, okay, right. We were writing tests. Um, so that was the empty. And then we should have, um, actually, I'm just going to steal both of these because both of those have obvious analogs here. Um, so that would be data. And in fact, we should have five bytes so I can, well, I should be able to go from four and still get the error. And this would be expected a data packet, but the first byte was not odd. Um, non data panics and that would be that. And then we want one like this that also handles, um, oops, too many bike spaces. Um, Oh, and actually, uh, did I change my expect up here? Expect the data pack. Okay, good. I did. Yay. Um, so I should have tests. Oh, and this won't panic. This test should be. Um, Uh, whether it's last packet or not um, is last data packet and so that's going to be three and we'll parse that and we will assert bang result dot is last oh uh Actually, that ought to be probably question mark, and then is last packet, boom, bop. And then we're going to want another one that it's not the last packet. Um, actually, I'm going to make that this, oops, one, and make that a knot. Um, okay, wonderful having you, um, and whether we see you or not, it's great that you're here, appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you, um, let's see, nothing happens on Saturday, but next Tuesday morning, uh, my time should be back in business, so, um, bytes is empty, not then... Uh, let's see. So this replaces this chunk here. Um, byte is empty. Not. Then. So that the not just negates the Boolean. And now we're turning that into an option that the parity test. And we say that's okay. Or if it's not, then we convert it into an incomplete packet. Interesting. Hmm. And we needed the not so that the then, yeah, totally. I'm actually going to grab this out of here and put that in a comment over here to contemplate. Um, and alternative from Wagafa at Twitch that is more Haskell 
like. Um, boom. Interesting. Cool. Thank you. Um, oh, uh, yeah, right. I see that. Um, I kind of like the... I kind of like the knot. I, I must say I find the use of explanation in Rust a little awkward because having it as a prefix logical negation operator and as this sort of postfix this is a macro thing um, leads to some code that's pretty weird. Like I've, I've, I've written things like explanation mark thing explanation mark um, where the thing was a macro. So I'm negating the result of the macro and I find that that syntactically is kind of odd. So as much as dot not open close is one, two, three, four, five, six characters versus one, I think there's a certain readability there that I like, actually. <clears throat> so, um, but I'm going to leave that alone for now. Um, uh, let's see if we fit, wrap up <clears throat> this testing. Um, so we've tested data packet stuff. Um, uh, we've tested, oh, packet numbers. We have to actually test that the packet numbers are right. Uh, so we're going to need some tests there. Let me actually make sure that the tests we have are passing. <coughs> oh. oh, we're not even compiling. Uh, what is going on? So line 231. It, what? Oh, maybe I should save. That could help. Okay, so it's actually line 235. Oh, I can't have a question mark because this doesn't return an error. Yeah, right. Um, so that's not going to work. I actually have to assert 